Welcome back to this new tutorial. Today I want to show you two simple methods to quickly add realistic snow to your 3D objects in Blender. The first one relies completely on the shader and quickly adds snow to all the faces that are pointing upwards. The cool thing about this is that I can simply rotate this object and the shader immediately updates. So now all the faces that are pointing upwards have snow on it and we don't have any snow on the bottom of our object. And after that, I'm also going to show you a very simple method to add real geometry as snow, which is going to look even more realistic and make it easy for you to quickly create amazing winter renders. So let's get started. All right, so to demonstrate how to add snow, I'm going to use this sculpture that I scanned a year back in Paris. If you want to follow along, you can download it for free from my BlenderKit profile. I'm going to put the link to this in the video description. So first let me show you how to add snow on the shader level. So let's open up a new window and switch this to the shader editor. And right here you can see the current material setup which is really simple. Now in order to add snow we want to create a mask where we want the snow to be. And in this case we want the snow to be on each face that is pointing upwards. So in order to find the faces that are pointing upwards we need to add in a new node which is called geometry node. And right here we're going to use the second output, which is displaying the direction of each face on our 3D model. Now we just need to compare this to a vector that is pointing upwards and we already get our mask. So to do this, press Shift A again and bring in a vector math node. Change it from add to dot product, which allows us to compare the normal to a specific vector. And since we want the vector that is pointing upwards, we're going to use 0, 0, 1. And this already looks almost like snow because it is displaying all the faces that are pointing upwards. And we can make this even better if we bring in a color ramp node, plug it in right here and then just crunch the black values so that we really only get the faces that are pointing upwards. Alright, so the most important part of our mask is already done. However, I want the places that are a bit more occluded, like uh, right here and right here, to have less snow than the rest. So in order to do this, let's create another mask. And for this, we want to use the ambient occlusion node. Let's take a look at the AO output. And once more, we want to use a color ramp node in order to crunch the black values and increase the contrast. And you can see that now those more occluded places are becoming darker. So next let's just combine those two masks by bringing in a math node, switch it from add to multiply, connect both color ramp nodes. And when you now take a look at it, you can see that we still have snow on the faces that are pointing upwards, but the more occluded it gets, the less snow we have. Currently, I think this is a bit too strong. So let's bring back this black value just slightly so we get a bit more snow and maybe we can also add a bit more snow right here. All right, so now we have the mask and we just need to add in the snow texture. So let me add another principled BSDF node. And let's use a mix shader to combine this with the original material. So plug this into the material output and use our mask as the factor. Currently this is inverted, so make sure that the original material is in the first input and our snow shader in the second one. And now this already looks really nice and we have snow on top of the rest of the material. So maybe add in a bit more snow by decreasing this black level. And I also want to add a bit of structure to our snow. So let's add in a noise texture and plug the factor into the height of a bump node and then the normal into the normal of the principal BSDF. By default, this is way too big. So let's increase the scale to make it more detailed and it is way too strong. So let's bring down the distance to let's say 0.002. Maybe just a bit stronger, 003. And now I think this looks really nice. And let me just quickly show you the final node setup. And the cool thing about this setup is that I can rotate this object wherever I want and it automatically adjusts. So now the snow is on the faces that are pointing upwards and is completely removed from the bottom. And I can just move this around and it adjusts in real time. If you now want to add the same effect to another object, you could either do the same setup again, or we can just turn this into a node group. So let's select all the nodes that we just added and press Ctrl G to turn this into a group. 
and you can now use the tab key on your keyboard to quickly get in and out of this group. And I'm just going to rename this to snow. And when we now have another object, for example, this garden gnome, and we also want to add the snow effect, we can simply press shift A and on the group bring in the snow shader and just add this to the end of your node tree. This is how quickly we can add snow to any other object. Rotate it around and it immediately adjusts. Okay, so this is how we can add snow on the shader level. But next let me show you how we can also add actual geometry to our objects to make it look even more like snow. And for this we want to use an add-on. You can install this for free from the official Blender extensions page, so I'm gonna put the link to this in the video description as well. And in order to install this, simply click on get add-on and then drag and drop it into Blender. I already have it installed, so I'm getting this message. And when I now press N, you can see that in the side panel you can find the real snow options. So with my sculpture selected, I'm just gonna leave everything on the default and click add snow. And this quickly adds an object to our scene, which is placed directly on all the faces that are pointing upwards and makes it really look like snow. However, I think this is a bit too much, so let's delete it and just do it again with a coverage of let's say 75% and I'm also gonna bring down the height to 0.1. So let's add snow one more time and I think this already looks a lot nicer. Now in older versions, it also added a really nice snow material. However, currently I'm getting an issue and it doesn't add a material at all. So let's just build our own the same way we just did earlier. So I'm gonna create a new material Let's call this white snow. And I'm just gonna leave everything on the default. Add in a noise texture to add some detail. Plug the factor into the height of a bump map and the normal into the normal. Then once more, play around with the scale and bring the distance way down. Now this looks like really nice snow. Now when I move my object around, you can see that the snow doesn't follow. So let's just select the snow object, shift click on our statue and press Ctrl P and quickly parent it to the object. So when I now move it around, you can see that the snow actually follows. So that's basically it, but I want to show you just one more thing. So let's delete the snow object one more time. And this time I want to add snow just to the bottom part of our object. So let's tap into edit mode, deselect everything. And this time I just want to select the bottom part of our object. So with all of those vertices selected, I'm gonna tap out of edit mode. And in the real snow add-on, enable selected faces, add snow one more time. And now it is only adding snow down here and not to the rest of our object. Once more, it didn't add the snow material. So we just need to add it again. And now this looks very realistic. Now finally, I just quickly want to mention that you can download all of the 3D objects that I ever created from my Blender Kit profile. You can download all of them completely for free and they are CC0 licensed, which means that you can use them for whatever you want and you don't even need to credit me. So I'm gonna put the link to my Blender Kit profile into the video description. And this link even gives you a 10% discount on the premium subscription of Blender Kit, which will give you access to even more 3D objects, materials and complete scenes that can be really useful for your 3D project. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.